this video, I'm going to talk about the sequencer and the rhythm generator. So these are two aspects of the subharmonicon that make it really unique. And there's a lot that I want to cover here. I'm going to break this up over a few different videos. I'm going to come back to the sequencer after we take a few detours, but we'll definitely come back to it. Today, I'm going to show you basically how it works and we're going to dial up some very basic rhythms. By the end of the video, we'll do an experiment and make a basic chord progression and play a sequence over it, essentially making a nice sounding patch with the mother and the subharmonica. So let's take a look at the sequencer. There are actually two sequencers, each with four steps, sequencer one, sequencer two, and they're identical, one on top, one on the bottom. The tuning knobs let you change the steps of the VCOs, and the lights show you which step of the sequencer it's on. Sequencer 1 is hardwired to VCO1, and Sequencer 2 is hardwired to VCO2. So you can't control VCO1 from Sequencer 2, and you can't control VCO2 from Sequencer 1. Right now, I'm going to focus just on VCO1 and Sequencer 1. But remember that Sequencer 2 and VCO2 operate in the same exact way. So you can just reproduce whatever we're doing on this with VCO2 and Sequencer 2. So I should point out that I've been making sounds by pushing this trigger button. But if you wanted to let the sounds ring out, you can latch the envelope by holding down the envelope generation button. That can come in really handy when you're tuning or finding a specific step or something like that. It frees up both your hands. The reason I'm not doing it in the video is because I'm talking and explaining how things are going and it would be kind of annoying if this was ringing out the whole time while I was explaining things. So for the sake of the video, I'm just going to hit the trigger button. Usually, I bypass the envelopes by holding down this button. It's just a good trick to have. Another thing that as we adjust our steps, you're going to want to make sure that the light is directly under the step you're adjusting. So let's start off. That's the sound of VCO1. Now if you notice, when I turn this knob, nothing happens. And that's because we need to tell sequencer 1 to react to VCO1. These buttons come into play to assign each sequencer to the different oscillators. The first one is oscillator 1, the sub oscillator, and the second sub oscillator. Now keep in mind that as we went over in the oscillator section, each sub oscillator is already tied and associated with the main oscillator. If the sequencer is moving the main oscillator, it's also going to be moving the sub oscillator. If you turn on the assign for the sub oscillator, it's going to move as much as, the, as much as the main oscillator is moving from the sequence, but also a double that because the su it's also being assigned from the sequencer. So as I said, I'm going to go into some functions in more detail in later videos. Sequencing the sub oscillators is one of the topics I think needs to wait. For this video, we're going to only be sequencing the main oscillators. In fact, I think that you can get a ton of use out of the sub without ever going beyond only sequencing these. With that said, I've definitely created some interesting things, and I suspect that there's some people out there who can come up with some really amazing results using this feature set. So I'm going to get into that. But for now, let's just turn these off and leave oscillator 1 on. So now, if I push the trigger button and turn the knob, you're going to hear it go up through the C major scale. I'm set to eight steps equal temperament. And it's just like moving this. So the sequencer is going to tell the oscillator how many steps to move and not necessarily what note to land on. So if you set it up a fifth, it's going to be a fifth up from whatever this frequency is. Now the knobs are a bit finicky and sometimes I have a hard time telling exactly which step they're on. 
I kind of wish these knobs had fixed steps so you could feel it lock in when you get to different steps. And the reason I suspect Moog decided not to do that was that having these be smooth, you can operate the sequencer in unquantized mode and switch between 12 and 8 steps easily. The range for each of these is determined here. Remember at the beginning how I said this I thought should be more over here if we were talking about a functional design because it has to do with the sequencer? That's what it does. It sets the range of these. So let's talk about the range. Right now I'm set to plus one minus one. So we're up one octave, and notice I can't go any further. And it would be the same if I went down. If you set it to two, those steps become smaller. And five octaves, quite honestly, I think it seems a little bit excessive. I don't think I've ever used that other than just experimenting around and making weird noises. And I think it makes the individual steps just too hard to hit. I mean, we're right now we're on eight steps and I could barely hit it. So it would be, it's just really challenging to use it at five. I could see maybe if you were doing unquantized and wanted this huge range, you know, maybe there's a need for that. We might do some experiments with that later. But for today, let's keep it simple. We're going to set it to step one. But for today, let's keep it simple and set it to one octave range. If you're using the sub as a rhythm instrument, playing chords or a bass line underneath a sequence, say from the mother, generally speaking, one octave is enough. So let's talk a little bit about the rhythm generator. And again, this is one of these things that... We're going to get into polyrhythms and all the different stuff that you can do with this. But right now, I just want to kind of show you roughly how it works. When you turn it all the way up, it's set that for every pulse in the clock, it's going to move one step. So for instance, I'm going to plug from the assign output of the mother into the clock. And right now, I'm going to program in a little sequence in the key of C. So this is what it sounds like. Pretty simple 16 step sequence. We set this all the way counterclockwise, and we use these two knobs to say this rhythm is going to impact both sequencers, then this is the only rhythm knob that matters. These don't matter at all because they're turned off. So if I hit play, once I hit play on the mother, this is going to move one step forward every single step of the mother. In fact, I'm going to turn down all my oscillators just so you can watch it. So it's moving in perfect time with it. So the divisions on the rhythm are the same as the divisions on the frequencies. That rhythm divided by one is, is itself, divided by two, divided by three, divided by four, divided by five, and so on and so forth. So if we have a 16 step sequence, if it's set fully counterclockwise, that means that there's 16 steps. If we turn it to two, which again, this is kind of hard to nail it perfectly because it is not, it doesn't lock in, it's a smooth knob. But if we set it to two, then that would mean for every two steps of the mother, there'll be one step of our sequencer here. So let's hear what that sounds like. See how they, I didn't go far enough. Okay, so let me reset it so we can watch it. And as we go on and on, it will just subdivide it even more. 
So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to actually say divided by 8. And what that will mean is that it will move one step further every time the mother moves 8. Let's just watch what that looks like. All right, so now let's program a very simple chord progression. So I'm going to unplug the connection to the mother for right now, and I'm going to move this to my first step. We're going to turn back on VCO1. And that is C. So the chord progression that I'm going to choose is a very common chord progression. It's 1, 5, 6, 4, which is C, G, A minor, F. And that's just a chord progression that's in, I mean, tons of popular songs. It's just a very common progression, and it's very useful. So we're going to do that. I'm going to go to VCO1, and we're going to program in the 1, 5, 6, 4 progression. So the first... So there is our C. So if we go down here, middle C. Now let's program each of the steps. So this one's I'm gonna to set to G. This one I'm gonna to set to A for A minor. And then I'm gonna set this one to F. And now we should have a one, one, five, six, four progression. Now let's bring in our sub oscillators. So since this one is already at C, I'm going to bring up my first one and should be in unison. And I'm going to turn it one octave lower. Now let's get me in the second one. And I want this one two octaves lower. So that's the first octave. And the next one brings up an F, so we don't want that. And there we go, that's our third octave. So one, two, three octaves worth of C. If we turn this up, we should get a very fat C sound. Now let's go through our progression. All right, I'm gonna turn these down. We're gonna to go to VCO2. VCO2, I wanna, we're gonna set this, do the same thing as VCO1, but we're gonna put it at G. So that means that we'll have a one and a five. So the first sound we wanna hear, we'll make sure to assign it to oscillator two and so we're at C, so let's turn it up to G. All right, and then we'll bring in oscillator two. And now oscillator three. Now that's actually a C. We could leave it there because C is down one fifth from G. So um, so that third step on a sub oscillator is going to be C. So we could leave it. But let's just, for the sake of this exercise, let's just go, all of these will be at C, three octaves worth, three octaves worth of G. And now we should have a really fat chord sound. Pretty good. Oh, I almost forgot. We got to tune the or plug in the same chord progression to sequencer two. So let's do that now. I'm going to turn down VCO one, and we'll do it just with this. So, 
So it should go G. Uh, so it's one, five, six, four. So it should be G, D, E minor, and four is C. So that's, the notes are G, D, E, C. And you could set this to C first and then make sure that all the notes are exactly the same in unison. Or, you know, like if I were to turn it to like this, then you could actually just play through each and make sure that they're in unison. That's one way to do it. Now I'm going to turn this back up. So now let's hear what it sounds like all together. Pretty fat. All right. Let's program a new sequence into the mother. So let's do something cool. I don't know if that's any cooler than what I just did before, but we'll give it a go. And I'm going to actually bring in the DFAM. So I'm going to go from the assign of the mother into the advanced clock of the DFAM and come from the trigger out of the DFAM into the clock of the sub. The DFAM isn't going to be doing much, just holding down a regular kind of kick sound. But let's hear what this sounds like. So I've got reset on everything, and here we go. I'm gonna mess around with sounds a little bit. So I'm hearing something, I'm wondering if this step right up here is accurate. So let's just turn these down for a second. Now it's, yeah, it's up a little bit too high. Okay, that should sound better. It must have hit it along the way. All right, let's see how this goes. Now, something I brought up in the last um, video is that sometimes turning this envelope generator down in a negative value can make these swells and so something like this is perfect for that so let's hear what that sounds like reset this reset this so now it's going to be swelling a little bit
Or are we going the other direction? Oh, I think I might have hit, hit it again. And you can see how that's just a great way to build up a patch. And if we wanted to speed this up and have it maybe go four steps for every time through, let's... All right. So now I have it set to go through uh, every four steps of the mother, it's gonna move on one forward. So, but let's just, for the sake of it, let's erase that sequence and write a new one um, based on these chords. So the first, um, four notes. I'm going to have it be C and then we'll go on to the next four notes, which would be G and then A minor and then F and let's hear how that sounds because then you'll be playing the arpeggios for the chord as the chord is playing. So we'll reset this, reset this, make sure the DFAM's all set, and here we go. And that is how you set up a very simple chord progression with your subharmonicon. So I hope this gave you some creative ideas. Uh, I'm going to get into some more complicated sequences, more complicated rhythms, having different rhythms, and get into all that stuff as we move along. But I hope this at least gets you started and playing around with the sequencer and maybe introduce some new ideas for you. All right, I'll see you next time.